Which way do y'all want me looking? Always. I guess whoever's. Whoever's whoever asking the question. Yeah. 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 You okay. <laughs> whoever's asking the question? Cool. Yeah, Let's do it. Who wants to go first? I'm still getting my thing up. Nick, so how are you enjoying your first few buds at AEW? Man, this. I've been in for about six, seven weeks now, and. Let me say, to be in six, seven weeks and to already be doing Wembley Stadium, this is crazy, man. So this this past like few weeks has been some of the best times of my life, probably the best time of my life. And being able to perform on a stage like this, like AEW, in front of thousands of people every week is something that I feel just very truly blessed to be able to be a part of. And I can't believe it's happening all at 18 years old. So this is, it's a dream come true. I feel like I'm dreaming half the time I'm alive, man. <laughs> now yeah. that you've gotten to finish school, like what's the biggest thing now that you're out just doing straight wrestling? What's one of the biggest shocks you've had now that you're, you know, fully out on the road and have full time to be doing what you want to do now? The biggest shock was probably my debut match on AEW because I, I, I knew once I signed the contract, it was about a year and a half until I was able to debut. And it, it was slow at the moment, but it went by so fast. And I remember like the day before my debut, I was so nervous the entire day. I was like, it's not even the day of the match. And I'm, I'm like dying with nerves right now. But the second I went out there, it felt like the whole arena was just two big open arms, just awaiting me and welcoming me to AEW. So that was definitely like my biggest, my biggest one was my debut match on TV. Plus, you had your mom in the front row, too, which they've been yes. showing on all the matches. That had to be gnarly, too. You got an arena full of people and then right in the front row, right dead center. Right, bro. <laughs> I, always, I always try to make sure she's there for the special ones, you know what I mean? There for as much as she can be. Nick, you got to wrestle uh, Swerve in your debut match. I know you yes. guys uh, have uh, history dating back to Defy. Did you feel good about uh, having your first opponent being someone that you were familiar with to show off your skill? Uh, I did, yes. So me and Swerve, like you said, we have had our kind of passed in Defy our two matches and uh, both of them were match of the year contenders for Defy and independent wrestling going over half an hour and uh, it, it definitely felt like a, I don't want to say more comfortable but it's like we know each other inside out you know you kind of hear that all the time but it's really me and Swerve are the definition of knowing the other inside out so being in there with him knowing that I know his tricks and he knows mine it was a little curveball but at the same time I felt more confident going into it with it being Swerve. Oh, we guys had a great match and I hope uh, we look forward to seeing more work of yours uh, in AEW so. Thank you so much. To go off of that how has it been to have Darby uh, right there with you you know we know the relationship with uh, you and Darby and your dad and all that kind of stuff so what does it mean for you to have somebody like Darby in the company with you does it give you any more comfortability and you know with him already kind of navigating the waters how's that been for you it's definitely like somewhat more comforting in Darby it's like I was there for his first day of training and we literally grew up training together so being there with Darby and then being here like thinking eight years ago we were together training in this garage in a shed and now we're on national tv every week and Wembley Stadium was one that really hit me hard. I was like, I can't believe we used to be doing this and now we're performing on the biggest wrestling event of all time. It was a very big emotional moment for me and I just, I, I try to take it in as much as possible. You know, people say to stop and smell the roses as much as you can and I make sure to do that at every chance I get, especially with Darby from where we came from to where we are now. It's, it's very beautiful to me. Nick, SB3 of uh, True Hill, he, you've been doing so much work with Darby Allen, so in the tag team division, you're known for your tag team work outside of AEW with the East West Express with yes. Jordan Oliver. What's the future for that? For me and Jordan or for me and Darby? For you and tag team wrestling, whether it be with Darby Allen and AEW or whether it be with the East West Express outside of AEW or potentially in AEW. What do you think about that? Ooh. <laughs> so I feel like what's very cool about me and Jordan and me and Darby is our personal relationship outside of wrestling. You know, I, the day I came to GCW, me and Jordan, we clicked instantly and we were constantly on the road together, traveling together, staying together, wrestling together. We were training before shows and it was, we just, we clicked instantly. And I remember we got thrown into a tag match just cause and we had this chemistry and we were on the same beat doing things like this. It would look like a mirror and it was like, Maybe we have something with it. So we took it and we ran with it and we ended up doing tours in the UK together and Japan. It's it's crazy. So me and Jordan, I want to continue to do the East West Express as long as possible. And same with me and Darby, like we were talking about, we have this special connection with each other where when we're in the ring, we click. You know, we, we know each other. We know what we can do as a team. We know we can do as singles, but put it as a team, it's a whole nother game. You know, and me and Darby, we kind of have this thing about each other where we're 
I don't want to say reckless, but we're willing to do whatever it takes. You know, we'll throw our body into the wind. We'll do whatever it takes to win and to get jaw drops and eye open. You know what I mean? So yeah. East West Express or me and Darby, I want to continue to do it as long as possible. Nick, uh, Chicago is such a hot fan base. And yes. You had a chance to wrestle Stork Grace at Freelance Wrestling. So what's it like wrestling in front of a Chicago crowd? The Chicago crowds, man, specifically uh, Storm Grayson at Freelance. Freelance wrestling specifically has this vibe that is just different, man. It is different. Let me tell you a true story, actually. When I first started doing GCW, it was maybe my fifth state I ever wrestled in. They took me to Chicago. It was my third GCW show ever. They took me to Chicago. And I remember I was there for a whole weekend. I had three matches, and I was... I couldn't believe it. I was like, Chicago is so sick. And I just, every time, I wanted to come to Chicago. Every time they were like, we're gonna come back to Chicago, please bring me. So whether it was for GCW or Warrior Wrestling or Freelance, the Chicago crowd is just different. They got this vibe about them. They got this energy that makes you really feel it. And it's 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 something different, I'll tell you. Chicago is like no other crowd. You've done so many things um, in your like in your young age. As far as, do you have a bucket list of other things that you wanna do in your career? Absolutely, yes. So I, it feels kind of weird to say sometimes, but it's it's awesome to achieve so many things at such a young age, but it's also I have so many things uh, that I would like to achieve. Uh, is it cool if I name a few? Sure. Uh, obviously, I'd like to make a huge impact on AEW and be one of the best on the roster, and I want to win championships, and I feel like it could be possibly realistic going forward to maybe shoot for a TNT champion or a TBS champion, and hopefully one day become a world champion or even a tag team champion with Jordan or Darby, and um, but AEW, I want to win championships. I want to wrestle the best, leave a huge impact on AEW. Outside of AEW, I would like to be a part of the best of Super Juniors for New Japan Pro Wrestling, and if stuff with New Japan went forward, become an IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. And um, I just, I really going forward, I my biggest goal is to make a huge impact on professional wrestling as a whole, and that everyone remembers the name Nick Wayne one day and. Hopefully, all that I've done by whenever that is. <laughs> are there any? Are there any particular matchups that interest you? I mean, you got such a wide, diverse range of from luchadors to big men to small guys and everything in between. What um you know? What are some of the matchups in AEW or elsewhere that um, interest you? In AEW, uh, top match is Brian Danielson. That's a very big one of mine. And Brian Danielson actually. He did a book signing in near Seattle, Washington, and he would actually tell people that came up to him, I want to become a professional wrestler. Where should I train? He'd say the Buddy Wayne Academy, and he would push them towards my dad's wrestling school. So me and Brian have, I guess you could say, a little connection together in a way like that. But he's definitely one of the best of all time. So I really want to share the ring with him. As long as Kenny Omega, I think, would be a very crazy dream match. Others like Pac and Ray Phoenix, I think we could do some amazing things in the you ring together. Ray would be nasty, too. We've done it. I know, but I've done I, it, I, yes. Yep, that's right. I forgot. I've seen it. Yes, I would like to do it again though, because I feel like yeah. me and him, compared to when we did it, compared to now, it's on a, it's on another level. Well, that was why I was going to bring that one up again. What I feel like what we're seeing in AEW, and especially with his contract supposed to be up with New Japan in the next six months, I feel like what we're going to see and what we did see it all in between him and Jericho was like a whole, you know, a more focused Will Ospreay. You know, he's talking yes. about putting his kids through college. I got to knock somebody out. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> it's so awesome. And Will's one of the greatest. One more, guys, for Nick. Uh, Nick, you were talking about uh, potentially doing Best of Super Juniors. Uh, are there any former IWG Junior Champions that you admire, wish to get into the ring with, or hope to potentially face somewhere down the line? It's a little curveball in your question, but uh, two of my favorites of all time is Jushin Thunder Liger and Hayabusa, two people that are junior heavyweight wrestlers that made a very huge impact on professional wrestling and Japanese wrestling. And I'm very interested in the junior heavyweight style and honestly heavyweight style of just Japanese wrestling as a whole. I'm very inspired and just intrigued by Japanese wrestling as a whole. So Jushin Liger, Hayabusa, Ishimori, uh, now Michi Marufuji, Kenta, all these guys, Kota Ibushi, all huge, very big inspirations of mine that I hope to share the ring with or the ones that I can't to make them proud or possibly be there while they're ringside for a match of mine. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.